Uh, all right, we're ready. We're on. We are ready and we are on. Um, man, so how you doing, brother? Hey, it's good to be back with you, man. I, yeah. I look forward to this once a week, man. The Ron and John Show. You know, you know, we're known coast to coast like butter and toast, man. And both of us, I think I'm more of the gray ghost than you are right now. But I, I know you got a little gray coming in too, it's brother. A, it's, a, but, yeah. it's a little COVID, a little COVID here. Yeah, yeah. I might have to go and cut that out or something. I don't know. It usually changes yeah, color yeah. in the summertime, so I'm just gonna go with that. <laughs> I hear you, man. So how you been the past week? Good, brother. Good. Um, uh, still been working on the house out here. I, I um, uh, had a couple new additions into the garden. Um, put another a new bird feeder up. You know, just staying staying doing the domestic thing. Um, and then uh, actually, I was uh, got to go out on a on a on a boat ride last week. Uh, of all yeah, things. how was that, man? Oh, it was awesome. We went out uh, courtesy of uh, of Narrows Brewing there. Uh, and, uh, and Scott Wagner took a, took a few people so we could, you know, maintain some, some social distancing, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was good to get out there get on the water, uh, and, and, and kind of exercise that it, it was right when they made that announcement that it was legal to do so. So I don't want anybody thinking that I'm out here, you know, just playing hooky for no reason out there, but yeah, it was good. It was good. And how, how, uh, how was yours in, in, uh, in Sandra's week? I know it was, uh, it was, you know, everything was good, but brother, you know, uh, you know, I was singing a song, please, Mr. Postman today, because <laughs> I got box after box delivered to my house. I guess, you know, the post office kind of been behind. Yeah. But I yeah. will tell you, ever since this, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm getting all kinds of these. Yeah. And have been ever since. You know, I called them out. And uh, so I got like 15 entrenching tools I got to sign here. But. That means that the eTool Nation is almost up to about 800 members, man. So that's um, awesome. On the rise. Yeah, the and, rise. If, you know, and if it inspires people or you know makes them happy, I'll sign a million of them if I have to, man. Heck yeah, and man, I'm just wondering when when I get mine signed, brother. Hey, oh, you I'll you tell you what, come by, man. You I'm, gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come by and bring an eTool, and I'm gonna bring my hatchet, and you gotta sign both. Awesome. And, yeah. then we'll, hey, and then I got some new moonshine this week, you know. We got so, it. We got uh, that. A few snorts of that when you come over. Absolutely, absolutely. So, who, who do we got on uh, on the show this week, brother? I will tell you, we have. You know, we we've, we've had some great guests. You know? Yeah. you know, I mean, we you know we had Scott Stalker on. You know, the U.S. Cyber Command NSA guy. You know, we've had we had Griff and Colton Smith, you know, right. Uh, right. talking about, you know, how being a military person and being an entrepreneur is possible. We had the spouses on. I will tell you, this one here is pretty special to me today. So our guest today is, uh, well, I'm going to, first of all, I, I downloaded his bio and, and it almost ran my printer out of ink. But uh, <laughs> so, but this guy uh, enlisted in the Air Force in March of 1989. And he's got various duties and backgrounds. Uh, he served as a professional military education instructor and he paralleled various senior enlisted positions while serving a squadron group wing task force and numbered Air Force levels. He's got plenty of combat and operational experience in Desert Shield, Desert Storm, Enduring Freedom. And he's got overseas tours in South Korea, Japan, Germany, and Alaska. And this guy serves as the chief master sergeant of the Air Force, and he represents the highest enlisted level of leadership. He provides direction for the force, and he represents their interests as appropriate to the American public and to those in all levels in government. And I will tell you, this guy, you know, I met him first right after I took the job as a CX, and I met him in a restaurant in uh, uh uh, Tel Aviv, Israel. He was the third Air Force Command Chief at the time, and we became friends. Then he went on to U.S. Air Force Europe and U.S. Air Force Africa, and he is now serving as the 18th Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, a very close personal friend of mine, and just one of the absolute best non-commissioned officers that I've ever served with. Uh, our guest this week is the 18th Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Kayla O. Wright. Everybody knows him as K Wright. So let's let's bring him out, Ron. What do you think? Let's bring him out. There he is. There he is. 
What's going on, fellas? The man, the, the myth, and the legend, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think for me it was. So uh, I got to I got to share the, the the first time that I heard heard his name. Uh, <laughs> it was it was uh, we had just gotten to we just touched down in, in Fairchild uh, Air Force Base, and yeah. uh, we, uh, we we had just gotten picked up and 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 you jump into the back there and see. Uh, and John says, "Oh, let me see if I could get old K right on the on on the FaceTime or on the phone here." And I had no idea who who you were at the time. He's and, and I was like, oh, "Okay, well, let's see who this is." He says, "Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force." I said, "No way!" And next thing you know, you're uh, I, I could you you're on the phone, and the pucker factor from the two seats in front of us of these two these, these E eight and the E nine was <laughs> gonna suck the air out of the out of the vehicle. <laughs> Cause they were like, is he really talking to him? And uh, that was, that was awesome. That was awesome. Hey, it was almost as if right. that, that they could think that you could use telepathy or something. You could tell if they were going 26 in a 25 mile an hour zone. <laughs> they were, you know, the driver was 10 to two and they were all, you know, stiff after that. I said, yeah, Hey guys, was. Just man, letting know all the work you guys are doing. You know, I'm so down to earth, man. I'm pretty down to earth when it comes to the senior NCOs, man. You know. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, yeah, that's great. Hey, well, thanks for being here today. You know, the Ron and John show here. You know, brought to, brought by Veterans Lending Group, and so Kay, you know, you and I spent three years together in the Pentagon, and we did a lot of things at the strategic level as well as the operational and tactical level. Hey, so. Uh, Right quick, tell us how the, the troops are doing. How how are the the nations in the world's greatest air force doing right now with the coronavirus going on and then still trying to maintain readiness and everything uh, for any anybody that you know is trying to mess around with our freedom and our way of life. So how how are they doing out there? Yeah. So you know, man, the answer to that question is always and, and people don't really like this answer, but but really the answer is always it depends. Right. So there are, there are pockets of places in the Air Force where airmen are doing really well, man. They've adjusted to this, what we consider new normal, working from home, uh, you know, dealing with the, the pandemic. But but there are some airmen and their families, man, who are struggling. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, there are some airmen who might have had a spouse who lost a job. Um, lots of airmen are struggling with homeschooling kids, man. Uh, and trying to balance working from home, homeschooling kids, and uh, being a spouse, the uncertainty of, uh, you know, we got some airmen, just like we got other service members who um, were in the process of PCSing, they were overseas somewhere, or who yeah. may have AOR and deployed. But I would just tell you, overall, uh, our airmen are doing really, really well. I get a chance to get out. I don't, I don't travel near as much as I used to and and, and the way that you did uh, when you were in the seat. But uh, I get out about once a week. As a matter of fact, tomorrow I'm going up to Minot Air Force Base to check on our uh, nuclear uh, folks. And, I mean, folk, they're taking this challenge head on, man. I mean, folks are finding creative yeah. ways to still get after the mission to maintain readiness. Uh, I went down to... Uh, JTF, the JTF, the newly formed JTF down at Shaw Air Force Base uh, and, and Northcom General O'Shaughnessy and Paul McKenna have put them to work um, helping out with the pandemic. So just being able to get out and see them, man, you know, folks are fired up. They're doing good. But I, but I can't gloss over the fact that we do have some some airmen that are struggling uh, a, a little bit. And I would just say generally, this is probably the case where you have good leadership, you have commanders and command teams that are staying engaged, that are checking on people, that are being flexible when it comes to working from home and all that type of stuff. Folks are probably doing pretty well. Where you have command teams who are inflexible, who are saying, hey, I need you logged in at 7.30 until 5.30. I don't care if you're working or not. Uh, some of those folks are probably struggling a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, Ron, uh, you know, we, we went to Fairchild you know, what Kay just said there was so important. The command climate there, driven by, you know, the Air Base Wing Commander and the 92nd Commander and Command Chiefs, it was just phenomenal to me on how motivated, how fired up the airmen were, how informed they were because of the level of engagement with the command team. Yeah, 100%. You know, I, I couldn't agree more. It's, um, you know, 
like we were talking uh, earlier in the um, in our little pre-show this morning is I it's it's been I mean I, I, I can't remember being around a group of individuals that were uh, you know that professional that proficient uh, in their jobs uh, what they were doing um, and you know whether that be the, the the front desk person at the gym uh would that be uh the uh, the instructors there at uh, at at sear um all the way to uh you know those being nominated for for various awards you know everyone just they knew their shit and and yeah. i was i was i was that was just walked away there just like wow this was this was incredible and you know coming from you know uh just the a ranger tier 275 you know i live behind behind a brown fence most of the time so you know we don't get to see and exchange with with a lot the breadth of of the of, of the different branches you know jtacs and and you know uh ccts and stuff like that pjs here and there but i was just uh you know hats off to to that that command and and, uh, and leadership team there for uh for for really you, you can tell when things go out it's, it is dissemination of information to the, to all levels you know where appropriate and um that the morale is is, is certainly one of them yeah, hey, yeah. one of the things, man, that me and General Goldfein have tried to do during our time in the seat is, is we've, I, I think we've uh, really been transparent, probably more transparent than any leadership team, uh, transparent, vulnerable, uh, you know, all, all that type of stuff, man. So we share as much information a, as we can. And we, you know, we're smart about it, right? We let the force know, hey, this is what we know. This is what we don't know. Uh, these are our, our uh, assumptions. And and a lot of that has spilled down to the layers uh, all the way down to the tactical level in the Air Force because airmen have come to expect it, that, hey, man, they, they want to know what's going on. Uh, right. I, right. I, I feel like this. Either they can get it from us or they're going to get it from Facebook. They yeah. will get it from social media. And there, there's lots of good stuff on social media. I, I use social media, and I know you guys do too. But uh, – you know, being transparent at, at all levels, man, has been very, very helpful. And, and the more command teams do that, the, the better airmen are. Well, I, I got to say this real quick is, is when you, um, uh, well, first of all, Dave Carter jumped in there and said uh, he's got mad respect for the Air Force. You saw that pop up. There. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, that, Dave. Dave. Um, is, is when you, you know, when you, when, when John asked you, hey, how's, what's the, what's the, what's the, for, what's the force like? How are the troops out there? How are the, all the airmen? And you, came out with something I was not expecting to hear. You know, you gave the good and the bad. Like, you know, you said in some areas, yeah, they're great. In other areas, they're, it's not so great. And there's areas we can improve. And, um, you know, not to say that 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 someone would also, others would sugarcoat it, but but leadership in the past at all branches, I feel, have always kind of just given, given a, a, a broad sweeping generality yeah. of what that yeah. is because they're afraid of what people are gonna think and say. and. And, and but, but by you saying that, how you said it, I can see that during your 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 tenure, how that did go through, you know, the rest. At, at least it didn't Fairchild, and I'm sure it, it, that's going to be the same same when we go to the uh, to to the other uh, uh, bases here in the future too. So yeah, yeah, hats off to that for just being real, you know. Yeah. Thanks, man. You know, Airmen, and I'll I'll just you know uh, let's just say service member. Man, they're not stupid, man. They they yeah. know when you, when you bullshit them, and when you you know we we all got our talking points that we get from our public affairs and all that type of stuff, and that's great. But uh, I mean, you 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 got to be honest with people, man, about what's what's happening, because that's where you know helping people begins with recognizing that okay, this is we we got some leaders out here that are fucked up, basically. Um, yeah, we have yeah. To yeah. And and we all the other thing is we all to me. Personally, as the senior enlisted guy, you know I got a hand in it, right? So uh, I'm I'm responsible for enlisted development. Um, so so we got some folks that are in positions that probably shouldn't shouldn't be in positions that are being promoted that probably shouldn't be promoted. And uh, so you know our, our team, man, we've been working on you know trying to get our enlisted evaluation system and our enlisted development tracks uh, done right. But but uh, Ron, I, I agree with you, man. There's there's no reason to sugarcoat stuff. And and try to pretend like everything is you know all gleeful and like yeah. I said uh, you know I'm, I'm not a Debbie Downer man we we got a lot of great airmen that are doing a lot of great things but we got airmen that are struggling too and that's just you know reality right hey right. so I got I got to ask you brother you know the Joint Chiefs of Staff senior enlisted advisors we were a pretty tight team yeah you know I thought 
Sometimes I thought my job was to make sure you guys didn't kill each other. You know? <laughs> <laughs> really, it wasn't you, but you know who I'm talking about. You know, yeah, yeah, to yeah. Each other. <laughs> but dude, we have always, you and I have always thought the same on the lethality and readiness of the force. And it starts with how people are, what they're doing every day to be physically, mentally, and emotionally prepared for what could be the worst day of their life. And you always led by example, and which is why I admire you so much. You know, I try to get all those, for four years, I try to get all those of our brothers out there to do PT with me, and you would be the only one. Now, the ProCom guys didn't have a problem coming out and everything. Yeah, but you always came out, and I, that was what I admired about you. As we continue to move forward, one of the things Ron and I continue to talk about is making sure that we understand that there is a mental and emotional toll that serving can take, especially you know if there's been some adversity that a service member or family's been through, you know whether it's combat, whether it's at home or whatever. So as, you, as you've done your four years back here, how important was it for you uh, to make sure that, you know, we were setting the example for what it meant to be physically, mentally, and emotionally ready for what Ron and I like to call could be the worst day of our life? Yeah, man. I, sent, uh, pro- I think in 2001, I watched this movie called Remember the Titans, and there was this scene at the water cooler with Julius and, and Bertier. Uh, and, yeah. It's, you know, so the famous line, attitude reflects leadership, right? So I, that's always yeah. stuck with me, man, is that we, we have a responsibility to lead by example, and our our teammates will go as 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 we go. But let me, let me specific to your question, man, let me tell you, I, I really had to change my mindset about um, – this this uh, resilience and physical and mental and emotional readiness because yeah. much like everybody else in the military, man, I grew up with a suck it up mentality. I grew up with yeah. a good man. Life is hard and just fucking suck it up and and we'll we'll get past it and life will be okay. And um, but you get to a certain point, man, where sucking it up is very very dangerous. You know, yeah. you, you, you suck it up. And, and then at some point, you know, you have a, a mental breakdown or you end up with anxiety or you end up with, uh, you know, uh, being aggressive toward your family or your friends or you end up with some type of condition that you didn't ask for. Um, and, and also when you're sucking it up, you fail to make time for yourself because because you end up saying, yeah. stuff like, hey, man, I'll work out whenever I get a chance. I'll eat this cheeseburger and these donuts now, but I'm going to eat right when, when I get a chance because I'm so busy with this job or, or whatever it is. And so I had to take a, I had to take a step back and say, Hey man, I, I, I'm not going to just keep sucking it up. Right. Um, I, I got it that, you know, life is tough and we're all busy, but I'm going to be a little bit more deliberate and purposeful about my physical health, about my mental health. Um, and, and I tell you what the, um, Ron, your your folks, the the, the SOCOM community, um, and I know John, you spent some time in that community as well. The SOCOM yeah. community has done a fantastic job, man, with with POTA and making raising your hand and asking for help. Okay, you got right. lots of yeah. leaders out there today who are saying, "Hey, I'm I'm going to see the chaplain or the psych doc on a regular basis." We've done a uh, a pretty good job of actually hiring commanders and chiefs who have had a history of mental health issues and concerns, especially related to the combat. So, yeah, it's, I think it's just extremely important. But but like we were talking about earlier, man, you got to be honest with yourself. And and if, if you've been just saying to yourself, hey, man, I'll just suck it up for all these years and then. You know, now you're an old crusty thief and you got all these problems, you got all these challenges, you got this anxiety. And in your mind, you know, this is what most people think. It's like, yeah, man, that's gonna get me a hundred percent disability. But yeah, man, it's yeah. also gonna get your ass in the crazy house, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't you don't gotta do all that. Do it. Yeah. That's what we say. You're doing too much. <laughs> yeah. Doing too much. You know, the uh, um in the community, it, it has started to bubble up a little bit because of, um, you know, they were seeing what was happening when when when, uh, when everyone was coming back, you know, and, and I saw that big vacuum. And so I'll tell you that that's been a, um, 
that's been on the on the table for about 10, 15 years now, you know, 15 plus years, what you see today. And yeah. it, it's, a, it's a slow, slow, slow wheel still, you know, and and especially when you're at that tip of the spear is very stubborn part of it as well. Um, yeah. But when now that and, and you know, just as the, uh, you know, we, we call Abrams Charter, you know, in, in the rain in the Ranger Regiment is, you know, what's what you being able to go out into the army. And, and, and exp express and share the leadership and things that you've learned behind the brown fence or in the shadows or whatever job that you had to share that to make the, the army a better place. And in this instance, obviously, you know, DOD across the board, a better place. But um, I, I have to say hats off to, uh, again, back at, at, at Fairchild, you know, uh, uh, adjacent Hodges, you know, uh, you know, and, and, and having those conversations. Right. And, and I think when John and I were there, it was a, a I felt like it was a little bit, not so much of a surprise, but like kind of a relief. I had so many senior uh, leaders come up after and just say, you know what? Thank you for sharing what you shared with us. Thank you for sharing, you know, that yeah. thing, speaking about this. Thank you for not letting suicide, anxiety, PTSD, TBI, et cetera, uh, uh, be bad words to say, you know, and, and we're, we're, we're including it in the conversation and um, it, it, it's it feels good, you know, to start thinking about yourself and and and, and understanding what that man, is. Ron, I, I, you know, both of you guys, man, I can't tell you how important that is, right? Because when when young service, not even young, right? But when our when our teammates look at us, they think, man, this guy must be perfect, man. This guy, you know, he's had the perfect life. Yeah. He's doing all all gravy. And so the more we can be vulnerable, and I'll steal this from. Uh, Brene Brown, the more vulnerable we can be in talking about our challenges and talking about, hey, man, I have to go see the chaplain. Me and my wife, we go to marriage counseling. We have problems just like everybody else. The more people say, ah, OK, one, it builds credibility, right? Because people yes. think, hey, this he's just a dude just like me, man, going through the same shit. Uh, but two, it lets them see that, OK, man, I can struggle like I'm going through this struggle right now and I can still become a chief or the chief master in the Air Force or Sergeant Major or, or the SEAC or a Colonel or whatever, uh, because I'm going through this. And and I, and the last thing I'll say about it is um, I think we've done a good job of helping people understand that, hey, man, when you raise your hand, you're not going to lose your clearance. You're not going to be the NIFT. You're not going to be right. the NIFT. You're not going to, you know, not necessarily. Now, there are some instances where you need it, right? We, yeah. You, you need to lose your clearance. You need to be yeah. flying status or not not going to combat, but mostly, I think only about 1%, and I can only speak for the Air Force, only about 1% of people who raise their hand and ask for help actually lose the clearance or get taken yeah. off of, you know, whatever, whatever status. Mm -hmm. Hey, Kay, so it's so refreshing to hear you say that, and Ron and I have had these discussions plenty of times. I think what we've got to get beyond to, to get rid of this stigma about seeking help is that understand we are in a business. You know, I showed this earlier today, and you remember this. Mm -hmm. You know, when I, when I called out, I said, you know, I've been signing 15 of these today. And yeah. oh, by the way, five of these got sent to me by somebody in the Air Force, man. So <laughs> I don't know where your airmen are getting your entrenching tools, but, uh, you know, two out of five may have a shortage of them because somehow these airmen got them. Yeah. I think it's, we have to understand that the spectrum of what we do as members of this warrior class means that. We're going to drop bombs on the enemy, you know, with the greatest air force on the planet. We're going to shoot them in the face or we're going to beat them to death with our entrenching tool that we need to be. But we have to understand that PTSD, TBI, and the effects of being in this high performing environment that is a life or death situation in, uh, when we're overseas is a reality. And, and you described it very well. And hey, we just gotta. Leaders have to understand if somebody needs to go see a chaplain, if somebody needs to go see, you know, a therapist, you know, a behavioral health therapist, come. It's okay. It doesn't mean that they can't function as a, you know, a pilot in that hell in that uh, uh, fighter aircraft or someone on the flight line or one of your battlefield airmen. So, just refreshing to hear you say that, brother. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, absolutely. What um, so. I saw, well, actually, I, I might wait wait for that question a little bit later that I was going to ask. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. Hey, you know, Ron, that this guy right here, you know, 
is he's like on the on deck circle to join our team. Yes, you know, sir. us that have the blue ID card, man. Yeah, he's, yep. he's up, man. He's still got the donut on his bat, you know, and he's taking his <laughs> practice. Piece. So, hey, uh, you know, we, we've talked about this. Ron and I talk about this all the time. We talk about a lot of things, you know, see what drinking beer together does for you. But, um, you know, we've been institutionalized and you've, you know, I read your bio earlier. You've been in this thing for over 30 years. And when I got ready to leave, it wasn't so much that I was leaving as the SEAC. It was that I was leaving something and a way of life that I had been associated with for well over three decades. So as, as you and Tanya get ready to, to move on to what's next, what's going through your mind now? And then how, how are you doing dealing with transition and what's the future look like for you, man? Yeah. So, uh, you know, what's going through my mind, man, is a little bit of uh, excitement and uh, maybe a little bit of nervousness, but mostly excitement and and, uh, you know, what's what's next? I, I feel like uh, we've done a, a good job, man, of, of putting the Air Force on a trajectory where, you know, the airmen and the, the folks are doing well. So I, I feel pretty confident that we'll be leaving the next team, Team 19, a, a, a good product. In terms of transition, man, let's be honest, right? I'm the Chief Master in the Air Force. I have a fantastic team, Team 18. And... Uh, so transition for me is easy, man, because just like everybody else, everything else, I got people babysitting me, man, telling me where to go, what to do, how to do it, when to do it and all that. So, I mean, you, yeah. you probably get a better feel for the difficulties of transition from, you know, somebody that's not in one of these senior leader positions that that have somebody, you know, doing basically everything, everything for them. Um, so the transition part is going well. And, and, and again, mostly that's because I got such a great team. Um, I, I probably got, uh, I would say the best senior exec in, the in, the definitely in the air force and, uh, chief master sergeant, Chris Rogers, and, uh, and then the entire support team, team 18, man, they're, they're just fantastic. I got a great wing man, Manny Pinheiro, the first sergeant for the, for the air force. But, uh, so, yeah. so I'm, I'm mostly just real excited, man, about the next phase. So I'm getting ready to turn 50 in July. So I still got a, you know, a whole nother life to live, man. Uh, I got 50. a lot of to play, a lot of sky. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. You shaving yet, man? <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but, but honestly, it's been going, it, it's been going pretty well. I tell you what, what the challenge has been is, you know, I'm in that, I'm, I'm set to retire about uh, 18 August at this point. And so I'm in that in that window where I'm starting to think about medical, um, starting to think about the next career. Uh, yeah. But I still got a job to do. Right. I still got a lot of stuff left to, to accomplish for the Air Force. And, and and my philosophy has been in this these last four or five months, man, I just want to tie up all my loose ends. I don't want to start anything new and put the next chief in a in a position where they, they got to take on some some great idea that I, I came up with in my last day. So, um, yeah, I, I, you know, our team, we've been busy, just all the things that we started, let's try to finish as much as we can and then really set the table for the, for the, for the next person. But, but, but sometimes, you know, you find yourself daydreaming, man, uh, especially now we're in this pandemic and I've been working from home, uh, on the days I actually have to put my uniform on. I'm like, shit, man, I got, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've got to, I, I, you know, the, the hearing you say that, uh, uh, Kay, I, um, you know, like John says, we do a lot of stuff with transition. I've been, you know, doing this for, for a number of years uh, myself as well. And, um, you know, we're always trying to look for what are the best practices, right? What's the what's the best way? When should people get prepared? When should they do this? When should they do that? Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and what I'm hearing, I know John, for some reason, Where's, where was Team SEAC? I, I, I didn't hear you say shit about your team putting up the kind of job. <laughs> hey, so, okay, so the special circumstances were had a brand new sec def and a brand new chairman that were full of piss and vinegar and ready to get out and save the world. Yeah. With when you know Troxel had like 90 days left, you know. And yeah. and you know, I I had to go to Afghanistan. Well, seven countries in six days over Thanksgiving with the chairman. And so when I got done with that trip, man, it was 10 days later and I was done, you know? So 
the point being is, um, you know, we are driven by our bosses and, you know, all our, our team can help us a lot and everything. And mine certainly did. I will tell you, you know, Sergeant First Class uh, uh, Chantel uh, De La Cruz Johnson, my uh, admin assistant, she helped me so much with my retirement stuff that I owe her. There, there's not enough dang uh, moonshine in the Appalachian Mountains that I owe her right now because uh, she really took care of me and uh, because my schedule didn't slow down. But um, but then I, you know, the other thing was, hey, you know, others like Kay said don't have that, you know. Yeah. yeah. But others not in those. High- I, I, will, like I will say that the message that, hey, first and foremost, man, get the taps a couple of years out and go and go a couple of times if you're able uh, is good. I, I found it interesting. I went to taps and I went to one of the executive tap sessions. So it was just me and a bunch of chiefs and and, and a bunch of 06s. Uh, man, there was some nervous people in there, man. There was some people in there that were like, oh, my God, I don't oh, yeah. know how to survive. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I got nervous when we when we did the. Um, the Tricare brief. I'm like, this is a lot, man. I like, I ain't, you know, yeah. you, I, I ain't never Absolutely. had to worry about shit except showing up to a medical appointment and yeah. uh, trying to figure yeah. out all that type of stuff out, man. I'm, I'm still, and I just chose to, to just forget about it, right? I'm like, like, no need of me being stressed out about it, man. I'll, I'll figure it out uh, yeah. someday, which is probably not the best, best advice. That's actually you know. the advice that we advise against. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But again, you know, having the safety, having the safety blanket of of the team, man, is really the the reason that that I kind of took on, on on that mentality. But I really, I think one June is is the window because my official retirement is one December. So one June is when I can, you know, start doing, and I've already started doing uh, a bunch of my medical uh, appointments and and all that good stuff. So, um, you know. With with that is you know like so we talked about before is like you, you know so what's what SOCOM was doing uh, as far as kind of starting that um, it's okay you know because everyone's looking at man what are these guys up here doing uh, if they're doing it then shit well, we, probably, we should probably be doing that too yeah and, and but but when you said about yeah team eighteen and you have a whole team around you that's helping you transition and stuff like that you know I can't help to think that the rest of the Air Force. Is probably thinking, well, man, what is he doing to transition? How can I do that? Now, being that they not everybody has a team, um, what what is your thoughts? And and I, I challenge everyone on this, but what, what are your thoughts and maybe creating with your team um, before you exit a best practices on what because you got you know a whole team that's doing all these things. Maybe some best practices for what uh, airmen should be doing and when they should be looking to to, to transition out uh, because. Um, as as I'm hearing you, um, uh, you know, if, if it's anyone that's a, a E7 below, E8 below that's transitioning out, um, they're like, well, that's great for him. Yeah. But, uh, you know, not doing OK. Um, and 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 to and there's always been this battle between DOD and the VA of whose job it is and when who's who's going to take care of the damn kids. Right. Right. Uh, DOD says we're taking care of the kids up to this point, and then it's you. And the VA says, "Well, shit, if you could do some more transition stuff." And they said, "Well, that's what we're giving you all that money for." So at some point, you know, uh, that's where we're we're kind of leaning up against the flagpole a little bit, you know. And and I'm glad we have John here so we can have these real discussions. Is uh, you know, just as a suggestion, it, it is maybe uh, putting some guidelines together, best practices of what of how, how airmen at, at what point. They should kind of be looking out um, to uh, uh, for their transition, their next steps. At this point, you should be looking at this, like you said. When sh- when should you be open up for your TAPS class? And I and I and I say this, and I think um, my I, I'd like to see it happen with the Air Force because I feel that your the organization is set up that people would actually follow and do those things. Yeah. Uh, you know, if something came out, so they they follow that. Okay, this is what I'm supposed to do at this time, this point, and then hopefully something like that will spark and ignite the fire for that to go across, you know, DOD, but yeah. it's not going to happen unless we have, you know, uh, uh, leaders at the top pushing it down. When, when John, um, had, had transitioned out and, was, and, and I was sharing, I had a, a little, uh, come to transition meeting with him and kind of spilled my guts on and like, Hey, this is what we're dealing with and what's going on. I, I wish I had some, 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 a uh, little camera. Cause you see the, his eyes, he was just like, it, 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 it was like, I didn't know. 
you know, he's like, he's like, I just, I just didn't know all this shit was going on. What can I do to help? And what, what can we do to, to make that change now? You know, which, which she is, obviously we are. Um, so what, what would you look like consider doing perhaps now that you're seeing this and, and, and hearing it and maybe uh, a suggestion for the next team? I know you don't want to drop a brand new idea and let them take it over, but I, I don't know. Just what, what are your thoughts on something like that? No, I think it's a great idea, man. I, I, I think, uh, you know, your point that, uh, there are lots of the type of information that you're talking about is it is out there. It's available. It's just so disparate. Right. There's a little right. bit here. There's people are doing yeah. this over yeah. here. Um, I, I think it's really a great idea for my office, my team uh, to to develop along with, you know, the folks who are who, who kind of help help manage this is, you know, develop a, a basic checklist or some basic guidelines on, hey, here's when you should start thinking about transition. Here's things that you need to consider for medical. Here's the, the what I think we need is the simplified, and and, and this is no knock okay. against the, the folks yeah. who, who do the briefings at TAP, but the simplified, okay, let's just try to make this as simple as possible when it comes to you know, uh, TRICARE. Now, it very well could be that it's already sim simplified and, and because I just never had to think about it. it. You know, it seems complicated to me on, you know, how, how to work through all that that stuff. Hey, I, I, same thing. I saw the same thing. Co complicated, confusing. And, you know, I mean, I got three TRICARE briefs and I was still confused. And yeah. uh, I agree with you, you know, wholeheartedly. No. So I think that's a good idea, man. So I'm, I'm going to run that by uh, Chris Rogers and my team, and and I uh, also got a great teammate, Nicole Snowden, who is part of our Chiefs group, who does Chief Chief assignments, and and she's really yeah. kind of been been helping me with uh, all things transition. So uh, I'll, I'll make sure that I talk to them about, hey, what are some things that we can do to help out uh, the force to to help them get through transition? I tell you another thing that, um, and and really, I I got to credit Dan Daly, and I saw Dan, man, I went to a. a, a education military education conference up in philly and i and i ran to dan but uh him putting um i think it's ricks over there now at the department of labor um yeah chris I, yeah i can't remember the the sergeant major that was over there prior to to, to chris but um ha having that connection with the department of labor that's gotten us the apprenticeships and you know thinking about some of that stuff fr from you know how do we help more service members gain employment, man. That's been very, very helpful because we finally um, are buying into um, the apprenticeship program, the U.S. MAP. Uh, we were the, one of the only services. I think we were the only service who who, who didn't uh, have a have a part in it. And that's been helpful. And I, and I tell you, I've been I've been encouraging um, you know, I, I value education, man. I went, I did a lot of schooling myself, but but I've been telling people, hey, man, let's let's not just send young service members to to go get degrees. Let's figure out what it is that they're interested in and what what what, what they want to do, what experience they have, because an apprenticeship or a certification might be a better option uh, than just taking classes and going to school and getting degrees. That you know, frankly, you know, for for most of us, you know, I, I got a couple of business degrees and and all this other stuff and. And didn't have any business experience, so you know so, sometimes you know we 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 chase this 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 education, and there's a better option for us in terms of how it might impact us in transition. These a lot of these young engineers yeah. and 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 cyber guys and maintainers, man, they would benefit much more from a certification or an apprenticeship than they will from a bachelor's degree in 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 HR or or something that's not related yeah. to what they want to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And, and you know, it's, and it also comes down to, you know, college isn't for everybody. Right. You know, uh, yeah. you know and, I mean, some people just like to go to work or get that OJT or learn on the job doing this, that and the other where they want to be a, a machinist, but they have a brilliant mind and, and just smart as shit. I mean, we, we've served with them, you know, uh, yeah. around. It's like, what in the hell are you doing in the military? You know, <laughs> Uh, well, that's that's awesome that they're that they are with us because we wouldn't be where we are. But um, yeah, and it's and just showing, I guess, showing in flux, you know, options, right? Of, of what and and with interests, right? What are you interested yeah. in doing? And then let's build off of that on what other things that are that are are, are out there and mm -hmm. and come up with a plan. I you know just yesterday I met with a um, a young ranger who's transitioning. He's a, he, check this out, uh, four year enlistment. He's in. Uh, he's been in for two years. 
Uh, he has about another two years left. Uh -huh. And um, he's thinking about getting out. And he says, yeah, I'm going to just go to college. So his squad leader set me up with this meeting. So uh, his plan was to get out, go to school. He wants to do some forest management, environmental, whatever stuff, sciences. And uh, I was like, okay, that's awesome. That's great. He says, yeah, and then GI Bill along the way. It was that, you know, I'll just figure it out a little bit. Yeah. And I said, well, awesome. So who do you know in that industry? Uh, nobody. It, it seems cool. I said, well, I don't know anybody in that industry. It's a very competitive industry if you didn't know. I do know a guy that tried it, but now he's working security at Amazon. He says, yeah. oh, I didn't know that. So I, I and I told him, I said, well, well you know, the, the thing is, is you is if you don't know anybody in there, right now is the time for you to get on your LinkedIn. Now start finding who those people are. Network them. Sell, tell them. Say, hey, I'm a I'm in, I'm in the army. I'm looking at transitioning out. I want to, this is the path I want to go on. What would you suggest someone like me do now today? You know, and, and, and after that conversation we had of just kind of back and forth, he was just like, I didn't think about any of this. I said, I'm not trying to, to, to dissuade you. If you really want to go down this path, break brush and go do it. But you got to know what you're getting into that you might not have a job at the end of that degree, that you might have this, you might have that. <coughs> and then all of a sudden, you might be in a situation where, damn, now what do I do? Because at yeah. that point, ain't no figuring it out. And, and and the other part was I told them, you know, whatever schools you get lined up, be all that you can be and do all those things. Because in a year from now, two, three years left, whatever, you might look back and say, shit, I should have stayed in. Or maybe I'm going to stay in and maybe I'm not going to try. And then, you you know, it's just it's just having that conversation. And, and he was just very thankful. And he you know, he's still two years out, you know, yeah. so we, we got to encourage people, man. And this is this is life in general. This is not just service members. We got to yeah. encourage people to be dreamers. Right. And, yeah. and my, what I tell people, man, is is dream big, but focus small. Right. So you might want to be the C act one day, but you're an E4. You got to figure out, you know, how to how to do your job and make E5. Right. Yeah. But there's nothing wrong with being dreamers and, and starting to think as early as possible about, man, what is it? What is my purpose in life? What is it that I really want to do? Because that will drive what decisions you make about education, about apprenticeships, about certifications, about, you know, what jobs you decide to take, how long you might stay in, what assignments you should you should take. And uh, but, some, you know, sometimes when when young people, when they when they're dreamers, when they say, hey, how, how can I be the chief master in the Air Force? You know, we we kind of come down on them and say, well, you don't need to worry about that. You need to be worried about, you know, how to be a, a, a E2 or E3 yeah. and all this other stuff, which is I got it. That's 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 true. But but I think if you if you live by the philosophy, hey, man, dream big, focus small, then I, then I think, you know, it, it can help you um, stay on the right path and not waste a lot of time and a lot of money. Because when you're young, man, you're going to get a lot of coaching. You're going to get a lot of mentorship. You're going to get a oh, lot yeah. of. Sergeant majors and chiefs and master chiefs and all that telling you and, and, and master guns and all that stuff telling you, hey, man, go to school or take this job and do this. And you're like, well, shit, I, the chief said it, so I might as well do it. And yeah. in your mind, you're thinking like, I fucking hate being on the staff. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and you, know, you know, one of the things that, that I, you know, I speak about all the time. OK, you remember where my office was, yeah. where, where the current SEAC's office is. And the tank was right next door to it. So all the high level meetings that our bosses had and the sec def had in there, that's where we hosted the president and everything. So all of those general officers and flag officers would come by there and inevitably they would come in and say hi to me. And, you know, as I was getting down towards the end, I got asked one too many times, well, what are you going to do now? You, you, you're going to go work on range control on Joint Base Lewis McCord or get a GS job or go work at Lowe's or something? And I thought, you know, no disrespect to him, but I said, these MFers think I am some edu uneducated dude that the only thing, because I'm an enlisted guy, the only thing I can do is go work at range control. Don't get me wrong, honorable job. If people want to do that, God bless you, go do it. If you want to work at Lowe's, go do it. But finally, one final three star, the day before my ceremony came in and asked me that, and he got the horns. <laughs> and uh, I told him, I said, let me tell you something, General. I'm coming for the jobs that you're going to be looking for. I said, you're going to have to fight for, with people like me and people like Kay Wright to get a job you want in the corporate world. Because yeah. as you mentioned, we have the requisite education. We have a lot more experience. And one thing we will always have an advantage in is the people business. 
because we still transcend the tactical, operational, and strategic landscape to visit people. Like you said, you're going to Minot tomorrow. I know you're not going out there to make sure they cut the grass, man. You're going out there to, to pull some the force, you know? <laughs> Don't get me wrong, you guys got to cut grass too, you know? But <laughs> So, I, you know, so now my talking point is exactly what you said. It's okay to dream. Go out and do what you want to do. Yeah. Um, just understand that it's a competitive environment, but you know, go out and, and be competitive and do what you want to do. So, um, yeah. So, Ron, do we got any questions from the audience? Let's see here. Uh, our producers can be popping some up. Boom. Ed Sullivan. What's up, Ed? Ed Ed's been a regular. Ed, Ed's here all the time, man. <laughs> Ed, Ed's a regular. You know, right. we got to get him a bar stool in his name. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's right. I had a question for John and uh, Chief uh, Master Sergeant uh, Wright. Uh, what one of uh, the many changes I observed in the time I was in was changing uniforms. My personal favorite was BDUs. Uh, what were your favorite uniforms? Also, John, did you ever get a chance to wear or at least see the Vietnam era OG uniform when you first joined? Okay, so I'll go first, and then Kay, I'll tour. So, yeah, I wore the OG 107s, uh, my first tour in the 82nd. Uh, when I got there in 1986, they issued OG 107s, and I it, I loved it. You know, with the uh, jungle boots, with the green jungle boots, it was just a great uniform. Um, you know, the BDUs was a great uniform, but I will tell you that, you know, the character of conflict continues to change, but the true nature of conflict is not changing. But as the character of conflict changes and the battlefield landscape changes, we got to make sure that troops are outfitted, truly outfitted for the mission they have to do. And I think the services do a great job of continuing to get after the uniform sequence to make sure that we're staying current with what the operational landscape looks like. What are your thoughts, Kay? Yeah, so, uh, man, when I first came in this job, I said, you know what, I'm not doing a goddamn thing with uniforms, man, because it's just so <laughs> emotional. It's Come on, so your brother. Come on. <laughs> Keep it real. And I spent the majority of my time, man, working uh, uniform stuff. And it turned out great, right? Because we 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 uh, took on the the OCP uh, uniform, like like the Army, right? Rightfully so. I wish, to be honest, all the services would would have have taken it on. But um, and then we had some other uniform issues with our service service dress that we've been working through, and and we're improving our uh, PT uniform. But my my I'm like Ed. My my favorite uniform was BDUs. I used to starch the crap out of them, man. I, I, you know, you couldn't tell me I wasn't the sharpest dude in the Air Force, man. I would go to there was a barbershop in the on Fort Bragg, right across from the the uh, the NCO club in the little shopping plaza. Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to go over there, man. There was a shoe shine man in there, man. So I, I used to That's go right. in there and let him come out. You know, I didn't have any hair, but uh, I would go in the barbershop, man, and let the shoe shine <laughs> man, you know, take care of my boots and and uh, yeah. so I love I love wearing BDUs. Um, I, I liked all the uniforms. We still had the olive. We call them olive green. So I guess the OGs uh, when I first came in in 89, but I didn't get issued. They stopped issuing them a, a, maybe a class or two before I came in. So people were still wearing them my first two or three years in. Uh, but yeah. I didn't have a chance to, to, to wear those. Awesome. Awesome. All right, yeah. John, are we ready for some rapid fire? I think we're ready. Yeah, we are. We got we're actually making we're making a good time because we had double guests the last two weeks. So we're we're good. Yeah. So rapid fire. Yeah, ask the first rapid fire question on you. All okay, right. right. You probably you won't I know you don't uh, acknowledge <laughs> this nickname, but you probably have the coolest nickname that the troops uh, address you by. And I yeah. told you earlier today on our rehearsal, you know, one of your beloved command chiefs, who you know very well, <laughs> and a, a stud sent me some pictures of you and uh, you know, some kind of religious garb and everything, yeah. you know, with your head superimposed on it. You have this nickname, Enlisted Jesus, yeah. that the airmen have given you, man. Um, how did this come about, man? And then when was the first time you heard this? <clears throat> So, <laughs> oh. 
So, man, it came about pretty early in my tenure. I think well, we we came in and we started making some some changes and they weren't I, at least in my mind, they weren't big changes. But apparently they were things that the force had been looking for and, and were excited about. So I think after the third thing that, that we changed, uh, somebody put a post on on social media and said, man, this guy fixed this. He improved that. And then he changed this. Basically, he's enlisted Jesus. And uh, <laughs> and then from there, man, it just went like buck wild, right? So people, I mean, they're mean and and uh, and they've gotten so much better. You know, I see them now, man. And I'm like, man, that that's pretty that going good. <laughs> uh, but I, but but what I, I what I always say to people, man, is how how can you not be uh, humbled by something like that that people see you in 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 that fashion? Um, yeah. but I do stand by, you know, what you said, man, I, I don't, uh, promote it. I don't, I, I never tried to tell, tell people don't do it. You, you know, I, I don't mind kids having fun. Um, uh, <clears throat> I personally won't put any of it on my social media or on my page. I won't sign yeah. anything that, that has it because I do realize that while it's funny, uh, to me and it's, and it's all in great spirit that, uh, it, it could be offensive to some people religiously. So I just ask yeah. people to keep keep that in mind. But I, I mean, I'm, I'm truly humbled and I laugh, you know, my team, they, they send every time a new one pops up, man, they send it to me. And I send it to my mom and, and, uh, and, and she's like, whatever, get out of here and come over here and take this trash out. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> uh, oh man, <laughs> this, this is gold. That's insane, man. I, yeah. I just I just googled. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was one you got sent to me today too. Oh, oh, Y'all, if, if anybody watching the show right now, you got to Google enlisted Jesus. I mean, it just pops right up. Right there. Like it's not like I'm going. <laughs> oh, this is a. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Could be worse, right? Could be an enlisted devil. So. Hey, so, uh, That's so, great. hey uh, we got a new service, man. Yeah, we do. We got the yeah. Let's, 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 now, you know, you know, I think you and Roger Toberman both owe the Army a big thank you, okay? Because you guys, you know, you were the Air Force was born out of the Army, you know, and yes. now the Space Force is born out of the Air Force. So we got this new service going on, man. But the first thing I heard about the Space Force, man, is that folks are wanting to join it because they said if you're weightless in space, you can't be overweight and end up on the fat body program, man. So, so I, have a Force, man. And I know Toby's going to have my ass for saying that, man. But uh, what's going on with that, man? Man, you know what? I tell you what, this is in a very, very exciting time. Uh, General Raymond, the chief of space operations and Toby Toberman, man, who is so he hadn't really decided he I, I want to call him the chief master sergeant of the Space Force. But 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 he's still working through what his E9 rank is going to be. So he might not have chief master sergeant. So right now he's he's the just the senior enlisted advisor to the to the chief of space operations. But uh, man, Toby's a good friend of mine. We've been working together for years. Um, I, I'm so excited for him and General Raymond and all of the, the professionals uh, that are in the space business, because I mean, the, the sky, yeah. there, there is really no limit, man, to the, the wonderful things that they'll be able to do. They'll be a small service and, and they're still working through, you know, uh, the relationship, much like the, the Navy and the Marine Corps, how the Air Force might might su support the Space Force. We're in a phase right now where we're giving airmen an opportunity. We we try not to drag uh, by force anybody over into the Space Force. So even the, the space professionals, uh, the space operators, both uh, officer and yeah. director, we didn't want to say, okay, like it or not, you're, you're going to the Space Force. We gave them all the option uh, to opt in and, and, and come over to the Space Force um, so we're in that phase right now. We'll also be bringing over or asking uh, some of our intel professionals, some of our cyber professionals, some of our weather professionals, um, uh, some of our missile maintainers, uh, not not the, the nuke guys, but the guys who who, who kind of maintain the, the launch, uh, who are in the launch business and maintain those rockets. But uh, 
So yeah, man, it's it's exciting. It's exciting having another uh, SEL to work along. Yeah. We 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 we're starting to do to to co-chair uh, lots of things. Uh, just making sure, man, that he receives the same rights, lights, and benefits as uh, myself and uh, Sergeant Major the Army, Sergeant Major Marine Corps, uh, yeah. the MIGPOG, the MIGPON, and all all that good stuff. So uh, yeah, 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 this is gonna be good, man. Nice. Well, also awesome. well, question for you. Um, this actually has to do with John. So okay. when, he, when he held up that <clears throat> that 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 paper, uh, you know, with with him, you knew what that meant right away, right? Yeah. So my question, there it is, surrender or die. Uh-huh. So when 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 John was was had to wear the dunce cap for six months uh, uh, after <laughs> after after <laughs> doing that, and he had to sit in the corner and watching days of our lives and as the world turns, yeah. Uh, what 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 was your support for John like? Um, man, I I really I tried to call John about uh, I think it seemed about every two weeks or so. Yeah. Uh, I would call or text just to check in, man, to see how he was doing, uh, to see what the the status was and if he needed anything, and and really just to give him an opportunity to uh, <clears throat> to offload because he did tell me he's like, "Okay, right, I'm in the corner, I'm fucking watching days of my life, man. I'm down here." <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know sometimes man as as a friend that's all you need right you can't always provide uh anything tangible but just being able to to pick up the phone and 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 express what what you're going through man I, and i i hope that was helpful i just tried to the entire time man let him know that i was thinking about him and uh that i was there to support him so uh and and, and yeah. i know I, I didn't call as often as i i could have but but i wanted to make sure that he he understood, man, that, you know, we were still teammates and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, brother, you had a day job, man, but I will tell you what, what I was so, um, grateful for is, you know, the, the day I got suspended and, and it hit the press, um, you called me your boss, you know, general Goldfein called me, uh, general Walters, you know, who had you safety, you know, uh, uh, or the, I'm sorry, you know, he was a USAFE, US, US Air Force Africa at the time, mm -hmm. now the U commander, and just all of General Slife, you know, the AFSOC, who he was really one of my kind of mentors through the whole process. But just how people opened up, and, you know, and, and the message I would get from you and Ron Green and, and Dan Daly and, uh, you know, in uh, Jason Vander Hayden and, and Kepner, you know, and all the guys. It, it, may, it meant so much to me that at, I just told myself, I'm not going out this way, man. I got too many people that are behind me here, and I'm going to make sure I get back in the game and finish this thing out right. So I really appreciated it, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. All right. So uh, my when, last question for you is oh, this. I, I got to follow on. I just got to follow on. It's a quick yeah, one. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. So when, when, when you heard the speech yourself, K. Wright, were you like – Oh shit! Yeah, oh, yeah. All right. No, I was like, "What the fuck is John talking about, man?" Yeah. I grew up in the Air Force as a medic, man, as a dental guy. The first thing I had to figure out was, "What the fuck is an entrenching tool?" <laughs> <laughs> I got airmen sending them to me all the time now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, but actually, and then I thought because I tell you what, man. So real world, um, I thought like, man, that's bold, and I like it because, uh, man, I grew up admiring guys like Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali and Bruce Lee. Uh, you know, folks who were very convicted about their position uh, in life and who spoke their mind even when it wasn't uh, popular. And so I had a lot of respect. I have a lot of respect for for John for being convicted one about because in that particular instance, man, with, with all of that type of stuff, the pressure of uh, people saying, hey, you shouldn't be saying this or, you know, all this type of stuff. You know, you could have easily say, ah, yeah, you're right. I, I should. Uh, and, and, that, and that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be open minded about, you know, taking feedback and stuff. But, um, you know, I. I I, I respect you, man, for taking your stance um, and and like I said, being convicted about, you know, how, how you see this particular issue. 
And uh, and I also enjoy your drop the mic moment at your retirement, uh, the transition ceremony, man. <laughs> well, I, I didn't, you know, I, that was it. When you're yeah. done, you're done. And I said, okay, they can't they can't make me retire because I am retired now, and they can't make me come back, you know, because what are they going to do with me? I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this here, but you know, I just wanted to make sure because we had these discussions several times about how things can be in Washington, D.C., and how, you know, the troops, the further they're away from Washington, D.C., sometimes the less informed they are, and sometimes it may look like they're seeing things in the operational environment in the Middle East or in the Pacific a lot different than potentially they are in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, but you know, I would have never said something like that if it wasn't for Secretary Mattis. You know how he was, man. You <laughs> yeah. remember the first time we went in and seen him, and he said, We ain't talking about defeating the enemy, we're talking about annihilating. Okay, yeah. so go out there and tell him, I don't want to hear this defeat word. It's annihilate. And uh, you know, when I first started saying it, um, you know, Mattis and I were doing town halls. And then when the the, the press, the the kind of press that got upset about it, General Dunford was on the stage with me. And so was a Medal of Honor recipient, Flo Groberg. Yeah. Me and Flo both had entrenching tools in our hands, you know. But uh, I just wanted the troops to understand that we still fully understand the fight they're in around the world there. And I wanted to make sure that wasn't forgotten. Yeah. And uh, plenty of backlash, man. But anyways, hey, so I got my last question for you is this. Um, you're a big social media guy. But, you know, I really like watching your social media because you you put post some stuff when you're relaxing. And generally you have your favorite adult beverage and you have a cigar, man. So I know all the traveling you've done the last four years. What is a perfect night? You get back home to the quarters there, you know, on Andrews and you're sitting there relaxing, you know, catching up with Tanya and everything. What are you drinking and what are you smoking, man? So, man, I tell you what I'm drinking is uh, there's a, a bourbon called Uncle Nearest and uh, Uncle Nearest is a bourbon, man. It's only about it's only been in production about three years. But uh, Uncle Nearest was uh, he was a slave, actually, who, who was wow. a killer in Tennessee. And he taught Jack Daniels when Jack Daniels was about eight years old. He took him under his wing and taught him how to distill Tennessee whiskey. And uh, wow. so there's a brand of bourbon and you can get you can catch it in, in shop at and, and in most uh, liquor stores. It's called Uncle Nearest. There's a 1856 version that's kind of uh, um, finished in some charcoal, maple charcoal barrels. And then an 1884 uh, that's not as smooth, but it's but it's pretty good. And then my favorite cigar, man, is uh, it's uh, it's called an Andalusian Bull. It's a pretty big big uh cigar so it'll take you about two two hours or so to smoke but uh really 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 smooth man it's a uh, uh, nicaraguan uh cigar made by la flor dominicana and uh so yeah that's that's a perfect evening for me man as a matter of fact i'm going to go do that when we get off this thing man, I'm going out my patio and i'm gonna practice <laughs> yeah yeah oh man hey, so, uh, you know um, we never like to talk about ourselves. Um, you know, that's just something selfless service is something that we live by, but, uh, you know, you're, you're pretty soon here. You're going to be starting your, uh, you know, kind of your exit, uh, address to the troops and everything as you continue to move forward. So we're going to give you an opportunity here, man, Ron and I, um, to kind of do a, a small little reflection and then, uh, uh, what message do you have for the troops as uh, you begin to pave the way for, you know, SimSAF 19 to come in? Yeah, man, I, I think my message would, would be, you know, real simple. And it's just to say thank you. Um, we we have I've been I'm really floored, man, by the level of professionalism, the expertise uh, from kind of like what Ron was saying from our uh, folks who uh, work in customer service desks at gyms and, and at lodging uh, to the Russian linguists and, you know, the uh, special warfare uh, airmen, our combat controllers and everything in between, man. Uh, the folks who are doing the train. I mean, we just got some incredible young service members, man, who are incredibly 
uh, talented, incredibly smart, incredibly dedicated. And uh, my boss always likes to say um, this thing. He says, hey, we sleep well at night because you guys don't. And, and I, I couldn't agree with him more. Uh, you know, all of our folks out on the front lines, man, that are getting after the business of protecting this nation. Uh, I just owe them a simple uh, thank you. And uh, I really, really appreciate it. I enjoy learning what they do. I enjoy uh, seeing the dedication. I enjoy helping helping them out. Uh, I particularly enjoy our wounded war dealing with our wounded warriors and yeah. uh, some of our our airmen that are going through significant challenges. I lost a good friend, uh, an airman <clears throat> by the name of uh, Isaiah, who uh, lost his battle with cancer. He had terminal cancer, and uh, he wow. passed away a couple of couple of weeks ago. But uh, just just seeing the level of, and, and he was one of those same guys, man. He was a cyber professional who was just fighting it to the end, man, and 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 remained a professional. And uh, him and his wife, Erin, you know, we we all became pretty close. But uh, yeah, let me just say thanks, thanks, thanks for you know being uh, such dedicated professionals and being such good teammates uh, to me and uh, all of, uh, and really to all of us. I, I definitely appreciate it. And uh, I'll just always have mad respect, man, for all of our service members. That's awesome. Ron. Yeah, man, Kay Wright, that was, uh, that's, that's, that's good stuff, man. Really yeah. uh, appreciate you having, coming on the show today, you know, um, and um, I, I sent you a Facebook request. So hopefully I get, you know, uh, get, get, get on that short list or something. I could, <laughs> So I already wrote down Uncle Nearest, and I, and I didn't have enough room to write down the cigar. So I'll be doing some follow up with you. Yeah, I'll send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, well that's that's pretty much our, um, our 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 time today. But again, thank you so much for coming along, and on, uh, to everyone else out there uh, on behalf of a uh, Veterans Lending Group and the Ron and John Show, we thank you so much for uh, for joining us. Um, you know, all across the country and really all around the world. Um, and, uh, you know, I've, we know this is sponsored by Veterans Lending Group. So if you uh, or your loved ones are, in, are doing a PCS move, uh, retiring, ETSing, uh, and looking for a new purchase, you know, let us know. Um, and also, this is the era for refinances, right? So Earls are going out there rampant and they got been getting uh, calls all day long on that. So uh, if you want to make sure that you are getting taken care of, getting scored away, give us a shot, give us a chance to to, to, to get out there and, and do something about it. Um, you know, when people say, well, what do we, what's, what makes us different than anybody else? Uh, we are the special operations in VA financing. Period. All right. <laughs> so, uh, with that, we thank you all. Uh, we look forward to, uh, to seeing you all tuned in next week. Um, and, uh, man, it's just, you know, like you said, John, we're having some hey. fantastic, fantastic guests. What do you, what do you got for him, John? Hey, when you have enlisted Jesus on the show, <laughs> it cannot be any better. Okay. Right. My brother, my friend, my confidant, man, we've spent time around the world together. Um, but the best times I'll remember is the things we did in the Pentagon, whether it was over on C Congress, uh, on the hill there or in front of the Pentagon press corps, you know, you know, taking some of the hard questions there or just what we were doing on a daily basis to get after uh, <clears throat> take care of the men and women of the U S armed forces. Thank you so much, my friend. And I'm going to get some uncle nearest and uh, I'm going to send you a picture of me, you know, twerking some down, man. There you go. Ron and I are doing it together. So we'll see okay. how that turns out. Hey, man, <laughs> thank you guys, man. I appreciate it. I'll catch up with you later. Thank you. Brother. All right. Yeah, All right. Right. Man. All right. Have a great Next week. See you next week, brother. All right.